Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Constance the Reader and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I have bought in the month of November. Um, I think that I have included everything that I bought that was not in the last book haul video and this is not just manga, although it is mostly manga. So <laughs> I did buy other things. But honestly, I really do think that I'm done for the rest of the year. Uh, if I were to buy anything else, it really needs to be the volumes that I don't have to complete a series, which at this point is just three. And if I bought anything else, it would just be for the sake of buying it. And I really need to stop doing that because when I catch up to read things that are on my TBR, specifically manga, I go ahead and purchase something else, which basically brings me a few steps back. So we're going to try not to do that. Plus I need to give people, you know, something to buy me in December for Christmas. So, you know, if I, if I just buy everything, no one will have anything to gift me. So we're going to put a pause on it. So yes, in December, I am going to try for a book buying ban unless I get a email telling me that the three volumes that I am missing, one being D. Grant, D. Gray Man Volume 18, uh, Blue Exorcist Volume 12, or School Live, oh actually it's four, I'm sorry, School Live Volume 2, Gangster Volume 7. I always forget about that one, so it's only four volumes that I'm missing. Um, I I can I can hold off on, I no, I, I, I want them all, period. I want them to be complete because it's going to make me feel better. But with that being said, let's get into all the books I have bought in November so far. So I'm going to start with the books I don't physically have right now because I placed an order during like the Black Friday time with Right Stuff and it has been received but it has not been like packaged yet. So I don't have it and that's okay. So it's um, six volumes that I will be getting hopefully this week at some point. Wish me luck. So the first one is The Savior's Book Cafe Story in Another World. I got the first volume of that. I saw someone recommend it on a book talk, um, TikTok, and it just looked very cute. It's about a woman's transported to another world and she pursues her own quest, which is opening a book cafe. She's transported there because she's supposed to be the savior of this world, but she's like, no, I want to have a book cafe. And it just looks very cute. Um, I... We'll see how I like it. I already wanted to get the second volume, but I put a pause on it because I don't need it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, next up, I got an email. They said Blue Exorcist. Two volumes that I was missing were back in stock. Uh, so volume 14 should be coming this week. And then I got volumes one through five of Spy Family. Spy Family is about a spy who has to build a family to complete a mission. Uh, the girl that he adopts, he doesn't realize that she's like telepathic. And then the woman who he's supposed to marry is an assassin. And I've watched the first episode. It is an anime and it looks really, really cute. And I've kind of been like on the fence, like, do I want to buy it and read it? Do I want to watch it? Honestly, it's been so hard for me to watch new manga if I own the actual, no, watch new anime if I own the manga. <laughs> Even though I didn't own Spy Family, I was kind of like, but I really would like to read it. I need to get a hold of that. But that's neither here nor there. Those are the books I don't have yet. Let's get into the ones that I do have. So on a Right Stuff deal to get volume 13 of Blue Exorcist. So I got my email first that said the 13th volume was in stock. I was like, okay, I went this, I'm going to get it. I did, but I was like, I don't want to just get this because they had so many bundle deals during Black Friday, you know, time. Uh, so I went ahead and got this bundle for a Galaxy Next Door. So they had a bundle for all three volumes, beautiful covers. I didn't really know anything about this. This was just kind of based off of the cover. Uh, yes, I have no idea what this is about. I'll read a snippet. I'll read a snippet for both of us. Uh, Princess meets manga artist. Ever since their father died, Ichiro Kuga has struggled to support his two younger siblings on nothing but a small inheritance and his passion for drawing manga. But with all of his responsibilities, it's becoming harder to keep up with the deadlines after his last two assistants quit to follow their dreams. Just as he's nearing his breaking point, the beautiful and scarily competent Shiori 
Goshiki applies to become his new assistant, but there's something almost otherworldly about Goshiki, and soon Kuga finds his reality turned upside down when she suddenly declares them engaged to marry. A sweet new story of first love from the creator of the hit manga and anime Sweetness and Lightning. I have not heard about Sweetness and Lightning, so it might be worth it if I really like these three volumes to read and possibly watch that. Although, let's be honest, I'm probably going to read it because I have a shopping addiction to books. I do. I do, I do, I do. Okay, so let's do the new releases that I was waiting for. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, uh... Nirkuchan volume six came out. I want to reread this all over again for this new volume because I really like this story. Uh, I feel like I've seen a lot of people dislike it, which is totally fine. It's totally valid. You don't have to like it. But um, from what I understand, it's like the anime obviously was kind of pushed to be like horror. And it is horrifying. It's about a girl who sees ghosts, sees all these things that are very frightening. And she feels like if she just ignores it, she won't have to deal with it. So every time she sees this grotesque, scary thing, she pretends like she can't see it. And it's also very funny. So I think that it was pushed, I think to most of us, or we all expected it to be like, I don't know, I can't even think of another, something actually like horrifying. Another, like another, think of it like that. But it's got a combination of scary elements, humor, friendship, um, but there's also like a deeper story for what's going on here. And until you actually get into it, you don't realize that. So you think, oh, this isn't really horror. Oh, her friend has big boobs. You know, you think that it's just fan service. Does it have that? Unfortunately, yes. But I like the story so far. So I want to reread this. So I can keep like staying within the story. I don't want to miss anything. And because it's six volumes, that's going to be pretty easy. Let's be honest. I got Zom 100 volume eight, another one that I absolutely want to reread from the beginning. And that's okay because it's really not that long. Um, and it's the bucket list of the dead. So young guy, he's a, you know, he works in a environment that is just do, 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 no time off horrible never takes time off never gets any time with friends or family and then there's a zombie apocalypse and he's like oh my god I finally don't have to work let me do things that are on my bucket list so that's a combination of kind of scary because you know zombies and very gruesome with the deaths but also very very fun funny loving I cried at one point but it's really good. And then a volume two of Momo, the blood taker. I still haven't read the first volume. Um, I think this is about vampires. I couldn't even tell you what it's about. I just got it because it looked good on Halloween and I wanted to read that. Uh, I got Don the Don and this is about uh, Momo strikes up an unusual friendship with her school's UFO fanatic whom she nicknames Okarun because he has a name that is not to be said aloud. While Momo believes in spirits, she thinks aliens are nothing but nonsense. Her new friend, meanwhile, thinks the exact opposite. To settle matters, the two set out to prove each other wrong. Momo to a UFO hotspot and Okarun to a haunted tunnel. What unfolds next is a beautiful story of young love, oddly horny aliens and spirits. Um, I've seen a few people who got this on TikTok say that it was really good. Uh, I'm interested to read this. I didn't even realize it was about aliens. So I'm going into this not, I mean, obviously I just read the back, but not really knowing uh, what it's about. So I'm excited. Uh, I got I'm in a love with the villainous volume one. Uh, this was also something that was recommended on on TikTok. Uh, romancing the rival. There's a sticker covering it. So I, I don't want to take the time to cut to, to cut that out. And there's a sticker covering it. I don't feel like editing out myself taking the sticker off. So excited about this. <laughs> and then I got Pluto volume one by Urasawa. Um, a lot of people who are manga collectors, manga readers suggest reading Urasawa. I've never read anything by them. I've never watched anything by them either. I started Monster many, many, many years ago because my friend Rochelle mentioned it, but I didn't finish it. 
I'm pretty sure that was the time where I just started Naruto so it's like that was my only focus because it's really hard for me to watch more than one anime at the same time I don't know why that is but I've heard that this is a fantastic series and that most people recommend like you should start with this one because it's really good uh, I think this is about machines in an ideal world where man and robots coexist someone or something has destroyed the powerful Swiss robot Mont Blanc Elsewhere, a key figure in a robot rights group is murdered. The two incidents appear to be unrelated, except for one very conspicuous clue. The bodies of both victims have been fashioned into some sort of bizarre collage, complete with makeshift horns placed by the victims' heads. Interpol assigns robot detective Gisaikt to this most strange and complex case, and he eventually discovers that he too, as one of the seven great robots of the world, is one of the targets. Heard good things about it. Honestly, just off of that, it sounds really good. And it's really not that many volumes. I think this is like 10 or 12. Some, it's very short, uh, but they all like have great covers as well. So I'm really excited to read this. And I definitely feel there's a good chance I'm going to just complete that series. But I want to not do the thing I do. And I'm just going to read it first. Knock on wood. All right, back to buying full series that I haven't started yet. Um, this is another bundle that they had with Right Stuff. And I'm pretty sure I got this when I got the 13th volume of Blue Exorcist. And that is all five volumes of Jealousy. This is a BL. And I mean, mm, okay, wrapped in plastic. You know, it's about to be freaky. You know, it's about to be freaky naughty. Okay, I think this is about a guy who falls in love with a Yakuza. I might be moving through these very fast. Let's see the back. Yeah, so this is about a guy who kind of falls for the head of the Yakuza. I'm just gonna leave it at that. And yes, it's a very, very, very pretty covers and I love the edges, but you know, I don't have a lot of BL in my collection. I'm interested to read BL, honestly. Um, I follow a few creators on TikTok who like that's their main content there's some other stuff like literally there's someone I follow whose name is BL Lover and she's so cool. She also lives in Virginia. That's awesome. Anyway, um, I got volume two of Goodbye My Rose Garden. I'm pretty sure I haven't mentioned this. I put these in a stack over here. If I already mentioned it, forget I said anything. Still haven't read the first volume. That's okay. One day I will. Then I also got Failed Princesses. This is another GL that I re that was recommended. Um, Fujishiro Nanaki is super cute, super popular, and super annoyed with anyone as plain as her classmate Kurakawa Kanade. When Nanaki finds out her boyfriend's cheating on her, however, her life makes a complete one eighty as she does her as does her relationship with Kanade. Ah, opposites attract. This just looks very cute. I definitely want to read more love stories I just think it would be fun okay now we're moving on to like <laughs> as you've already seen we're I'm going to be showing you how many other series that I bought it took them not completion because I'm pretty sure this one has more volumes coming out but like what you can buy and that's all six volumes of Firian or Fryan See, I, I just got it based off of someone's recommendation, but it looks very, very cute. So excuse me that I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, that just goes to show you, I just oftentimes buy things when it pops up on the screen. I don't even listen to anyone describe it. Uh, that's on me. Uh, so Elf Mage, Freerin, Freerin. And her courageous fellow adventurers have defended the demon king and brought peace to the land, but she will long outlive the rest of her former party. How will she come to understand what life means to the people around her? Decades after their victory, the funeral of one of her friends confronts her with her own near immortality. She sets out to fulfill the last wishes of her comrades and finds herself beginning a new adventure. So this sounds super duper lovely. You know, this was based off of someone's recommendation. That's a beautiful cover. Um, and a cover by I'm gonna be honest with you but I also have heard people say that it's a fantastic series and I am hopeful that it will be mine but as you can see I don't even know what the count is on all of these and I'm not done with more than one volume in a series because you know as I've said several times you know I had that issue when I was buying adult fantasy 
um, I replaced it. Like I did a good job and I stopped doing that with adult fantasy and replaced it with manga. I'm not sure how to save myself anymore. I'm really not. Let's go to these guys. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, oh, well, I'll just do this one. Uh, so I got volume two of Hell's Paradise. I have the first volume. I haven't started reading it yet. But again, this is another one where most everyone has said that it's a fantastic series. So I'm pretty sure that I will like it. But I'm going to read these first two series before I get too crazy about buying more. I think it's 12 or 13 volumes. So I could definitely I could definitely buy them. But I'm gonna calm myself. Now this one here. This is an ongoing series and it's like in the 20s. I'm sure it's going to get into the 30s soon. So this is not one that I could just buy them all and I'm done. So I decided I'm just going to buy five and see how I like it, which I was doing for a while. And then I ruined that. And that is Children of the Whales. So this was recommendation. Someone saying, oh my God, this is an underrated series that I don't hear a lot of people talk about and the covers are beautiful. Um, that was actually, I think, one of the reasons why they brought this up because one of like, you know, like a little book talk challenge thing, like a beautiful cover. This cover is beautiful. I can't, I don't know if you can tell, like, it's a little iridescent kind of thing. Um, but no, I don't really know what this is about but the covers are beautiful. I do remember the person saying that pretty much every volume that has a different character has to do with that character. Not that the series is just about like just one person. I'm pretty sure it gets them all together. But yes, I got the first five. I think they're beautiful. Let's read the back. In an endless sea of sand drifts the mud whale, a floating island city of clay and magic. In its chambers, a small community clings to survival, cut off from its own history by the shadows of the past. Hmm. This might be one where I try and get friends and family to buy me the rest of them. Uh, we shall see. Here is a completed series, though. So, as you know, I'm trying to collect all of... Dead Man Wonderland. Now that is a show that I did watch. I did watch the anime and I thought it was really good, but it kind of ends on a cliffhanger and it's hard right now to find the volumes. Eventually I will. I had no idea that that creator made another series and it was called Smoke Parade. Uh, this is another one, <laughs> not the same person, but somebody who did some type of challenge. They were like, uh, you bought the series based off of one cover and it was this cover and as soon as I saw it I was like dude this looks so fucking cool um so I got all I got all 10 volumes yeah yeah and they had them all in stock on right stuff so I got these before the holiday so it was like probably the second week of November oh my god these are beautiful so cool um, let me read the back. Basically, this is like they live in a world where um, you can get like organ transplants on demand. So, you know, something's being harvested, but there is something more sinister happening, which I mean, it'd have to be if you can get organs on demand. Okay, what do you think is going to be going on? Um, and there's an evil organization that needs to be taken down by our main character. And... I mean, look at it. These characters look, oh my God, look at this one. It's just so fucking cool. Like, how do you, how do you not, don't you want to be, uh, I want to be cool like this. This is like how I wanted to dress, how I envisioned myself when I was goth as a teenager. It wasn't giving this, I'm telling you that. But beautiful, I can't wait to display these with Dead Man Wonderland. Um, but I'm probably gonna put them, you know, next to Death Note. I think the covers are beautiful. And this, the finale, I'm excited. Uh, so this was the last one I bought where I have all of them because I'm a sick freak. And then yesterday, I think it was Saturday, the day after Black Friday, which unfortunately I didn't have to work. Books a Million had a really cool deal. And actually this morning, today is Monday, I had to stop myself. The Cyber Monday deal was also really cool. They extended it from Black Friday, but I was like, you know what? Connie, stop. You've already bought a lot and you have more coming. 
But this was a deal that was too good to pass up in my opinion. So most of the omnibuses for Attack on Titan were 50% off. So I watched Attack on Titan when it first came out. I, I still remember the moment I watched it with my friend Rochelle the first episode. Her and I on our sofa, on my sofa, the very end part happening and us looking over at each other with our mouths wide open. It was such a memorable experience and it was such a gut punch. You have to continue that series uh, first episode in my opinion. And I continued watching it with my husband, but it got to a point, I think at season three, that I was like, you know, I'm really excited to get to the basement, okay? And I care about what's going on, but because I hadn't read it, I didn't, I, I got this feeling that like there was a lot more filler going on and there may very well not have been filler, but it just felt like it was taking too long to get to the point. And I decided right then and there, I'm probably not going to watch it, but I do want to read it because obviously we're going to get to the point very quickly. So I didn't realize that they had omnibuses for Attack on Titan. So I knew that I wanted to get this, but most of them were 50% off. So the next, <laughs> how many? The next five, so volumes four through 18 were all 50% off. And I just, oh, Lord of mercy. See, now I'm dropping the shit. I just felt like you can't pass that up, right? Do I need to hold this on my shoulder? No, I think you get the point. Um, so yeah, I was like, I got to get this. 50% off? Are you kidding me? 50% off? Like on an omnibus? You know, the, these things are expensive. So yes, I went ahead and got the vast majority of the volumes of, well, of the volumes of Attack on Titan because I really didn't care if I had the single volumes or not. But I didn't like the fact that when you try to buy the box set of Attack on Titan, it comes in like a thing of five. It doesn't seem like a good value. Um, it doesn't seem like you're really saving money. So this, I definitely saved a lot of money, wouldn't you say? Ooh. So that is pretty much all the manga I bought in November. I was kind of like up in the air. I'm still up in the air if I want to get the, the fourth box set of One Piece. It's on a really good sale with Books A Million right now. And they have it in stock. I could literally pick it up. I think I would pay $150 for it instead of almost $200. Actually, no, no, it's actually 130. I forgot that was if I got those other books I wanted. Because <laughs> uh, I was going to order the rest of Spy Family that you can get, which was a really good deal. We'll see. I still have time, but I know that it's not necessary. And if I really want some, if I really want it, I can buy it. It's still going to be a decent price on right stuff after all of this. It's just not available right now on right stuff. Anyway, so let's get into the regular books I got, which are actually not half nonfiction half like everything else all right so we'll talk about the two nonfiction I got I got Massage Noir Transformed Black Women's Digital Resistance by Moya Bailey this was mentioned on book talk I had never heard of it before uh but it looks fantastic and I read up and I was like this looks amazing um so when Moya Bailey coined the term massage noir, she had no idea that the term would go viral, touching a cultural nerve and quickly entering the lexicon. Bailey shows how black women actively reimagine the world by engaging in powerful forms of digital resistance at a time when anti-black misogyny is thriving on social media. Groundbreaking work, massage noir, transform highlights black women's remarkable efforts to disrupt mainstream narratives, subvert negative stereotypes, and reclaim their lives. And if you don't know what massage noir is, uh, I think the easiest, simplest way to explain it would be the intersection of racism and sexism. And that's why you should always try to be an intersectional feminist and learn about intersectional feminism because I think I talked about this in the last video I did about the reread tag. Um, the books that I mentioned that I would want to reread again because I think that they're really good, the two nonfiction books I recommended both talk about that and one of them specifically talks about how uh, when it comes to feminism oftentimes a lot of us are introduced to it uh, from the white feminist lens and how that really is not covering what the fuck is going on and that you need intersectionality to have a better understanding of everything and other people's experiences. 
And then I saw this and I was like, okay, I might want to read this. And it's Taking Back the God Who Riots, The Radical Jesus by Damon Garcia. So this was really interesting. Now I've mentioned that I'm not a religious person, but for the most part, I get that there's a difference between like evangelical Christians oftentimes I guess run of the mill Christians and then like people who try to be not like that okay and there is a difference between people who use the bible in my opinion to mm -mm -mm -mm, on people which tends to be the opposite of like the teachings of Christ a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the ways people are like I'm a Christian has nothing to do with helping other people, not being judgmental, not being racist, sexist, um, against poor people. Anyway, so this person, the author was interviewed by, I don't know what this man's name is, but it is this man, he talks with like a very nasally, I, I, I can't describe it. Um, but he, He's one of those people with a podcast or with a microphone. He likes to be all up in your face and he wants to be like, um, how do you put it? Like controversial, but also like I'm a devil's advocate type. And, you know, he's being interviewed by this guy and he, it's very funny because when he's talking about his, when he's talking about Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ was oppressed by the government and that you know, the Roman Empire and that it's odd that there are people who use Christianity to then be oppressive and not re you know whatever um he's like where where did you get that where did you get that Jesus was oppressed and it's like well from the fucking bible wasn't he wasn't he killed wasn't he killed yes by the government anyway this just seems like it's gonna be very interesting. Um, again, I'm not Christian. I'm not religious, but I like stuff like this, because I think it is important to get that kind of perspective. And I do think that there is a difference between people who are like this, and like this when it comes to religion at times. And unfortunately, I feel like I have to encounter more people like this. And I don't like that. But that's just me. Oh, and then I almost forgot about this one. Uh, Fatty Fatty Boom Boom, a memoir of food, fat, and family by Rabia Chaudhry. Uh, this was, I think, recommended on Amazon. I think the cover just really, it's beautiful. It's yellow. I don't think I have many yellow books. But also, you know, fat up my alley, don't you think? And that's not me being rude to myself. It's just the truth. Anyway, um, yeah. So Rabia, known for the podcast Serial and her best-selling book, Adnan Story. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I don't listen to, I only listen to like one, two true crime podcasts. Um, three, but I haven't really been listening to any podcast recently. So I can't remember the name, but it's a newer one. And the good thing about that one, which I will put on the screen, is that it is more, it's more about the victims yes you learn about the person who did what they did but it is in no way trying to prop up the murderer the serial killer it is focused on the victims which all true crime should be it shouldn't be about making fun of victims in any way i do think that you can you can have there be humor as long as the joke is at the expense of the serial killer not at the expense of the victims. That's my personal opinion. But I don't think I've ever listened to Serial or not. And I'm only vaguely familiar with Adnan's story. But anyway, uh, as well as her own widely popular podcast, podcast Undisclosed, serves up a candid and intimate memoir about food, body image, and growing up in a tight-knit but sometimes overly concerned Pakistani immigrant family. I just thought that this looked beautiful. And it sounds like it's going to be a really good book. Uh, and maybe I'll give this podcast a listen to you. Never know. Exciting. And the last three, one of these, uh, books with Bonnie talked about on Instagram and I was like, oh, haven't heard of it. I'm going to get it. The next one didn't even realize this author came out with a third book. So that's on me. And then the next one is this popped up with the other one. And I was like, you can't pass up the name and the cover of this. So the first one is the love con. Look at that. That's beautiful. 
all's fair in love and cosplay. Smart, sexy, and unputdownable. Mm, I've never read The Boyfriend Project. Mm. All right, he is cosplaying as her boyfriend, but their feelings for each other are real in this romantic comedy from Cerecia Glass. Sometimes Kenya Davenport believes she has, was switched at the hospital. How else could a lover of anime, gaming, and cosplay come from STEM parents? Still, Kenya dreams of being able to turn her creative hobby into a career. She finally has a chance to make it big when she joins the reality show competition Cosplay or No Way. There's just one catch. The challenge for the final round is all about iconic duos, and the judges want the contestants' significant others to participate. Unfortunately, Kenya is as single as it can be at the moment. Luckily, her best friend, Cameron Lassiter, agrees to be her fake boyfriend for the show. Role-playing a couple in love will force them to explore what they're hiding under the mask of friendship. Can Kenya and Cam fake it until they make it, or will she be real about her feelings, knowing it cost her best friend she's ever had? So I actually like the fake dating trope. I, I've read a few books with that, and I actually like it. I think it's really interesting. Um, I, I haven't read many, but the first one that comes to mind is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. So I'm definitely excited to read this. Obviously, I'm someone who likes anime, I like gaming, and I like cosplaying, even though I never commit to doing it. And that's on me. Next one, Blackmail and Babinga by Mia P. Manansala. Third book in the Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery. I didn't even know there was a third book. Once again, I am not in the loop because I got into Arsenic and Adobo through Book of the Month Club. The second book I didn't know had come out because I don't know why I assumed, but most books that are on book of the month, they end up like the second and third book are in there. No, no. So I was out of the loop. I need to follow this author on Goodreads because I did ha I had no damn clue, but I'm very excited about this one. When her long lost cousin comes back to town, just in time for the holidays, Lila knows that big trouble can't be far behind in this new mystery. So definitely excited about that one. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm sure this is already a long video. And then next, Dead and Gondola, a Christie Bookshop mystery by Anna Claire. I laughed so long <laughs> when I read the title of this book, Dead and Gondola. And I'm sorry, but like, cozy mysteries just do it. They just know how to do it and they do it really well. And this one does it for me. In this series debut, a mysterious bookshop visitor dies under mysterious circumstances, compelling the Christie sisters and their cat, Agatha, to call on all they've learned about solving mysteries from their favorite novelist. So this definitely seems like no one asked us to do it, but we're gonna do it anyway, which I actually like ones like that. I tend to read a lot of them like that, like um, the Noodle Shop Mysteries, Lana, no, well, actually it's gotten to a point where people are asking Lana to be involved. Oh my god, and the same thing with um, Plum from uh, Takes You to Bingo. Yeah, it, it always comes to that. People always want you to finally get into it. <sighs> Whew, that was a lot. I don't even know the number. I'll put it on the screen because I'll, you know, do a count later. But that is everything, knock on wood, that I bought in the month of November. Like I said, I'm still on the fence about the fourth box set of One Piece. I may get that because it's just such a good deal, but that's it. That's what I have. I've got a lot of stuff and I am sticking to the fact that in December, I'm going to try really hard to not buy anything unless it is the four books that I don't have to complete my series. Once again, that is Gangsta Volume 7, School Eye Volume 2, Blue Exorcist Volume 12, and... D Gray Man Volume 18. I really don't think I will find D Gray Man anytime soon, but the other three, I think it's possible. If you see any of these, message me, buy them for me, I'll pay you and I'll tip you. I'm just being honest, because I really want them. It's gonna bother me if they're not complete. I don't know why, that's just how I feel. But thank you so much for watching my video. If you like the video, please like the video. If you like, like it, hit the notification bell like subscribe you know follow me on other social medias if you would like what do you think about all the shit i bought are there any series that you have that you heard me talk about that you were like yes girl i'm really glad that you bought that i want you to read it now or you know do you have any suggestions you can leave them but you know just know that you might be influencing me to buy more <sighs> so thank you so much for watching my video have a good day goodbye